In this video, we're going to talk about the aging method for accounts receivable that's used when you want to estimate bad debt. So the easiest way to, to come up with a bad debt expense is basically just the percentage of sales method. Uh, you just look at the sales and you say, okay, 3% is uncollectible, and then you've got your journal entry. The aging method focuses on the different types of accounts receivable. Uh, specifically, you can set out an actual schedule called an aging schedule, and you set up and say, okay, got the age and let's say that the receivable has only been due for less than 60 days so you say under 60 days and then you've got receivables that have been due between 60 and 120 days and then you've got receivables that have been due over 120 days so those ones it's been several several months nobody's paid you yet for these and so you might see immediately uh, where you'd, you'd be less likely to collect these. You think, hey, look, it's been more than four months. Uh, so you might have a higher rate of, of people not paying in this category than something where it's just been less than two months, they just got the bill, and, and so forth. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and kind of walk through how we put together one of these schedules. And, and this aging method, um, it's also sometimes known as um, the percentage of receivables method, or you can call it uh, the balance sheet approach because we're looking at receivables themselves a balance sheet item instead of looking at the income statement approach focusing on sales um, so we've, we've got the age already we're going to need another category which is the amount uh, how much the receivables were for so the amount let's say that the under 60 days so let's say we've got 200 grand and then we've got 75,000 in receivables that have been due between two and four months and then the ones that are more than four months will say forty thousand dollars now here's the thing we're gonna come up with a different rate for each of these so we'll say let's, let's say here so we'll call it percent estimated uncollectible this is the percent of receivables of each category we're gonna go through and say, what percent do we think will be uncollectible? So we'll estimate for this, let's say historically, we say, you know, if, if it's just been under 60 days, only 3% of the time is, is it actually uncollectible. But if it's between 60 and 120 days, maybe at that point, we say, oh, well, 10% uh, chance it'll be uncollectible. And if it's, if it's over 120 days, if someone hasn't paid in that long, maybe we estimate 30%. Okay, so now we go and we say, all right, we, we've got our estimates for each one. Now we can go and just, just kind of multiply this out. Just multiply the amount times the percent that we're estimating will be uncollectible. And we get in our under 60 day category, we'll get 6,000, 7,500 in our between two and four month category, and then 12,000 in our most delinquent category, the people who haven't paid in a long time. So now the, these are our estimates of how much will be uncollectible in each category. Now we just we add that all up, and that's going to let me just change colors here. We add that all up. That's going to give us twenty five thousand five hundred. Now this is basically what our allowance for doubtful accounts should be at, right? If we look at, at the balance sheet, this is what allowance for doubtful accounts should be. Okay. Now, here's the catch with this aging method. We can't just go and say, okay, well, let's go and, and make an entry for you know depreciation expense, and then we'll credit allowance for doubtful accounts, and we'll just do 25.5 and 25.5. Now, now, we can't just go and immediately do that, and the reason is that there might already be a balance in ADA. And what do I mean by that? Well, let's think of it as a T account. Okay, so we, remember, any account, you can always just put together a T account if you're having trouble understanding what's going on. So ADA is our allowance for doubtful accounts. Now, when I say there might already be a balance, I say, let's say, for example, there's a credit balance of 1,000. Okay, so that means that if we were to look at the T account for ADA, and if you have trouble understanding this, check out our video on T accounts, but we've got a credit balance here of 1,000, and we're supposed to be at 2,500. That's supposed to be our balance. Like if we look at the balance sheet as of that date, 
it's supposed to be at 25.5. So what does that mean? That means that we need to make some kind of, when we think about this journal entry, we need to make a credit here that is going to account for the fact that we already have a thousand in that account, right? So basically we have to say, okay, we already have a thousand. So a thousand plus what? A thousand plus what is going to give us 25.5. Okay, so, so the answer is 24.5. And so that's going to be our journal entry. So we're going to have depreciation expense will be 24.5. Oh, excuse me. I apologize. Um, I've been using a depreciation and what I mean is bad debt. Bad debt expense is going to be at 24.5. And if we look at our, our, our associated credit, allowance for doubtful accounts will be 24.5. So again, it's not going to be the 25.5 because what we're actually calculating when we do that aging is what, what the ending balance of this allowance for doubtful accounts should be. But we already had a beginning balance there. So we needed to account for that, right? If we had just credited ADA for 25.5, if we had made the, if this would be 25.5 instead of 24.5, then we'd be adding it to the thousand that was already there, and we'd be overstating this allowance for doubtful accounts. Now it works the same similarly if if we have a debit balance to begin with in that ADA account. So let's say we have ADA, and we start with a debit balance of 500. But we still know now we need to get to 25.5. Okay, we have to say, okay, what credit needs to be made that that will that will account for the fact we already have a debit balance here, and and you can see that it's going to need to be 26,000. So what's that mean? Well, our bad debt expense is going to be debited for 26,000. And then we're going to credit that allowance for doubtful accounts for 26000